Spotify is the world leader when it comes to streaming music, offering 80 million tracks and 4 million podcasts for free, with the option to upgrade for improved sound quality and offline listening. Daniel Ek, Spotify's co-founder and current CEO, aims to make music for everyone by giving people access to the world's music. Let's take a look at how he did it. Daniel Eck was born in a working class district of Stockholm in 1983. Eck's mother, Elizabeth, was a childcare worker, while his stepfather, Hasse, a mechanic who later retrained as an engineer. Music ran in his family, with Eck's grandmother performing as an opera singer and his grandfather a jazz pianist. His childhood at school was spent learning to play the piano and performing in musicals. Alongside his love of music, Eck also loved technology, after his grandparents gifted him a computer when he was only five years old. Initially, he played a lot of games, but soon found them boring and tried to improve them. He started coding when he was only seven years old, which was common among tech entrepreneurs in Sweden, as computers could be bought very cheaply at the time through a government scheme. Eck had a reputation at school as a computer whiz kid and was very skilled at programming helping teachers install software onto their computers. And he started his first company at 14, building web pages for clients, charging only $5,000 for each job, while competitors charged $250,000. Eck undercut the expensive consultants and hired classmates to do his homework as he was too busy servicing these clients. He later ran a web hosting site out of his bedroom with two servers hidden in his wardrobe and soon made more money than his parents, averaging around $50,000 a month from his thriving enterprise. At 16, he applied for a job at search engine company Google. However, Eck was rejected, and they told him to come back when he had a college degree. This prompted him to try and build a better search engine. However, it proved very difficult, and he soon abandoned the idea. Soon after, He won a place at one of Sweden's elite technology universities, but dropped out after only eight weeks to found more tech startups and work for a number of web firms. For one auction site who employed Eck, he ranked all their pages on Google by deciphering the algorithm and boosting their place on the search. In 2006, Eck cashed in on the boom in internet companies by selling one of his businesses for $250 million at the age of only 22. This prompted him to retire buying a Ferrari, a luxury apartment, and regularly going to nightclubs, but the lifestyle soon made him very depressed. He sold his car and the flat, downsizing to a cabin near his childhood home. It was here that Eck and Martin Lorentzen, a fellow tech tycoon, created the idea for Spotify, as the music industry in Sweden was being decimated by illegal download sites like Pirate Bay. Major music labels saw revenue fall significantly, and were keen for action to take place as CD sales declined. In an interview in 2010, Eck founded Spotify to solve the problem of piracy by producing a service that was better than piracy and at the same time compensated the music industry. Eck met Laurentin in 2006 after he bought Eck's company at Vertigo and they quickly became friends and bonded over their unexpected wealth and lack of purpose. The duo aimed to make money from Spotify by selling online adverts an area they were particularly experienced in. In fact, the name for Spotify was initially a misheard shout from Laurentin, but was soon changed to combine the words spot and identity. Eck spent the first two years trying to get music labels on board with his idea, eventually launching in Sweden in 2008. Within a year, they had one million users, and by 2011, Spotify launched in the United States. The company attracted a range of investors, including Sean Parker, who founded Napster, and J.A. Wallach, a U.S. musician who managed relationships with artists and managers. It wasn't easy in the early days, with Eck camping outside music label offices in order to secure meetings with any company willing to listen to them. They tried to make artists and labels understand Spotify and how their business model would work once they licensed the music. Spotify initially launched a free UK trial in 2011 and had significant early success, halting the free registration only six months later and returning to an invitation-only business model. The company then launched in the United States in July of the following year 
offering a six-month trial period supported by adverts that allowed users to listen to unlimited music for free. By January 2012, the free trials came to an end and users were limited to 10 hours of streaming each month, with five players per song. This soon developed into Spotify's current model of free usage on computers and laptops, with adverts playing every four to seven songs, depending on listener duration. They also removed all limits on the free service on mobile phones. In March 2011, Spotify had 1 million paying subscribers across Europe, and by September this figure had doubled to 2 million. However, in 2014, Taylor Swift withdrew her music from Spotify and accused the company of not paying its artists properly. Others also joined in, but if it wasn't for Eck and Spotify, many of these musicians would make no money at all as their music could easily be downloaded online. Eck eventually won Swift over, with Spotify pointing out that a large chunk of revenue is paid to artists and record labels whose music is on the platform. In 2018, Eck and Spotify pursued a direct public offering rather than a more traditional IPO to let investors realise their returns rather than raising fresh capital. The shares opened at $165 on the US stock exchange, some 25% higher than the direct offering price. This valued Spotify at $26 billion, making Eck a billionaire. In October 2018, Spotify launched podcasts onto the platform, growing listeners by 175%. The company also purchased podcast companies Gimlet Media and Anchor for $340 million to boost original content on the platform and bring in listeners, as they tend to spend longer on the app than regular music listeners and bring in more subscriptions. Spotify have brought in a range of major podcasts that they exclusively broadcast, including the world's most listened to podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. The hosting of such prestigious podcasts has sent a message that Spotify is the place to be and lays down the competition to Apple, who accounts for around 60% of podcast listeners in the United States, according to Bloomberg. The push into podcasting is a slow burn for Eck, who is trying to diversify the company and reduce the reliance on pure music streaming. That is a major reason why the company is loss-making. However, this push hasn't all been plain sailing, as Joe Rogan's comments on the COVID-19 vaccine that were aired on his podcast caused issues and saw a number of musicians pull their music from the platform in protest. These issues were resolved, but it's brought into the question the debate around free speech on the platform in light of this misinformation. In 2022, Spotify has made it easier than ever for creators to launch a podcast, with those in the United States, United Kingdom, Canada and Australia able to do so, with plans to broaden this if it is successful. Spotify also allows creators to monetize their podcasts by choosing how they make money, whether it be by adding the streaming and insertion tools that seemingly integrate adverts into the podcast and helps advertisers target specific niches and markets. While Spotify is still loss-making, they have not increased their subscription prices from £9.99 per month in the United Kingdom or $9.99 in the United States. As much of the company's revenue is paid out to musicians whose music is streamed on the platform. However, as consumer attention switches from radio to online audio, Spotify is well-placed to benefit as people are able to follow their passions and now profit from them. This is stoked in arms race that Spotify is betting heavily on the podcasting to drive growth and win the race for listeners. Nothing should be taken away from X success though, as today Spotify is the world's most popular audio streaming service with 433 million users. 188 million subscribers across 183 markets and is poised to continue this upward trend in the coming years.